Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on Iterative Hard Thresholding, or IHT as I will call it from now on. This tutorial will tackle three common reconstruction problems that IHT can uh, generally solve with certain limitations. The first one we have is deblurring, which we can see a blurry image here that we want to make sharp. Uh, and this is usually caused by motion blur, where a camera is shaking. And this is an example of a blur kernel where um, it, perhaps the camera shook up. So our next example is of uh, a corrupted image where um, there's a lot of holes in the image and we would want to fill this in. This is called in-painting. Uh, an example that might cause this is uh, low light in the image and stuff like that. But this is an example of just random noise, um, uh, random holes that are, are injected into the image and we want to get rid of that. The final example is of demosaicing, which is basically taking a black and white image and turning it um, into a, a three-channel color image. And this is actually the way cameras really work is it's just a 2D grid of pixels and uh, each pixel has a RGB filter on it. So if you took this, uh, this image, this, uh, this 2D image, and split it into three RGB images. There's a bunch of holes in the image, as you can see here, and the image looks terrible. Um, so we want to fill in those holes uh, and make it look good. And um, the funny thing here actually is, that, so this this is the mosaic pattern, but here you'll see there's, so it, it goes up to 200 pixels and there's only two pixels, two, uh, 200, but there's only two pixels. This doesn't make sense. Uh, Matplotlib seems to be downsampling with the same uh, pattern, mosaic pattern that I'm using, um, and it, it just made it look like this. In reality, this is every single pixel, it, every other pixel is red, green, blue, red, green, blue, like this. So, um, so all of these uh, problems here that we're trying to solve for are all a subset of what you would call the linear inverse problem, which is really just. Um, a normal linear equation. You have y, which is the destroyed image. You have uh, a, the uh, linear operator that destroyed the image, and then x, which is the latent image that we're trying to find. A bit about linear algebra, you'll know we probably can't solve this very well with the inverse of a in either the space or frequency domain, nor with the pseudo inverse due to all the nulls. So a better approach than these would be to emphasize the natural features of an image. Under the assumption that an image is natural, we know that it is sparse in the wavelet domain. And what I mean by natural is it's a pretty loose definition in that like we know that this noise image is not a natural image and then something you can, you can take a picture of in this world is, is a natural image like a plant. So um, the uh, wavelet transform, the wavelet domain is kind of interesting. It's very similar to the Fourier transform in frequency space. So I just want to kind of explain it a little bit, the, the characteristics of it that'll um, justify why this algorithm is the way it is for um, the, the IHT algorithm. So if uh, we look at this frequency time space, um, and here in an image, time is actually space. Uh, so this is frequency in space. Uh, and in the original image, we have pure resolution in the space domain. And in the Fourier transform, we have pure resolution in the frequency space, but no information uh, in the time domain or in the space domain. Um, we can get around that a little bit with this thing called the short time Fourier transform, where we can make a decision, a trade-off, if we want um, uh, a lot of resolution in uh, s space uh, and little in frequency, or um, a lot of resolution in frequency and a little bit in space. And this this trade-off comes from the bucket size we choose for the short time Fourier transform. And each of these, just so you know, are called Heisenberg boxes. These are um, just kind of are defining our constraints of our frequency time trade-off. So the wavelet domain is interesting and it's a bit of a hack of this where at high frequencies we get really high um, space resolution uh, and at low frequencies we get really high frequency resolution. We want this is that both natural features, natural edges in the image and noise uh, in an image 
both live in this really high frequency domain. And if we were to only have the Fourier transform, it, they would all be clustered together here. Um, and it'd be really hard to, to distinguish the, between the two. Um, and in this wavelet domain, uh, we can more clearly see the difference between the two. And I'm going to show you an example of a 2D image, uh, the wavelet transform of a 2D image. So here I have this uh, image that has different angles. Uh, and we can see the wavelet transform here of it. And the way this works is that this first image here is just a, uh, a low-pass filter across the image. And um, it downsampled, so we get rid of all the noise. This um, uh, this image here is uh, free of most of the problems we may have. Uh, and then here we have the horizontal details, so a high pass filter going uh, in this direction, so we can capture all the edges across here. And then the same thing here in the vertical direction, and then here we have the diagonal direction, and we can see the corresponding edges for. Uh, each of those dimensions. So what's interesting here is that we can see that these natural features, these edges that we see, you know, it, here's a real image, you know, we see these edges, they uh, are prominent here. We can distinguish them from the noise. And we know there's no noise in this image because low pass noise is all in the high frequency and this, is, this, got, this has gotten rid of all the high, the high frequency data. And we can much more clearly distinguish noise from our target features that we wouldn't have saved. Uh, if we were to just have purely, um, uh, purely to just get rid of all high frequency data, we'd be completely destroying these images and then this destroying these edges and this image would look like garbage. The first thing we want to do is load our image in both grayscale and color and make sure that it's scaled between zero and one. And you can put any image you want in here. Then we're going to want to create our three linear operators, the blur kernel, and I've provided one for you in this pickle file here. Our corruption mask, where we will inject a bunch of zeros into our image uh, in a random pattern. And finally, our RGB mosaic mask, which I created this little function here. If you read it, it it's pretty simple. It's just creating the grid pattern that I showed you earlier. Um, then uh, we want to apply these three operators to our original image to get our three destroyed images. Now, down here, we want to take our three linear operators and their adjoints and uh, treat them more like objects, more like variables that we're going to pass into the IHT function. Um, and we don't want to have to pass all this like metadata on it. Like This is fixed. The, the kernel is fixed. The mask is fixed. And this mosaic pattern is fixed. Uh, and we just want to pass in the, the object that's it's going to take in the image and, and do what it needs to do with the image and nothing else. Uh, and the same thing applies to our wavelet function. So we're going to pass in... Um, so the wavelet function has a lot of parameters uh, to it that we want to just kind of fix in the first place and make a decision and then it's not supposed to change uh, during the runtime of the algorithm. So this uh, wavelet decomposition level is just how many times we want to repeat this process. So we have these high, uh, high pass filter segments here uh, on the original image, but we can repeat that on our low pass uh, filter image here. And so it'll create a, uh, a recursive pattern of this image. So that's that. And then we can also choose what wavelet kernel we want, and that's this. And there's a bunch of helper functions here to make this easy. I would highly recommend reading the Pi Wavelet documentation on how these functions work. This is just packaging everything clean, so these functions work really well.